Hi, my name is Dave Bode for PremiumBeat.com, and in this lighting series, we will be covering a variety of lighting instruments, lighting support, modifiers, tools, and accessories, and we will be going over a few different interview lighting setups. In this video, we will be talking about lighting accessories. There are a ton of accessories that can make your life easier, far more than I could cover in this video. What I am going to do is talk about a few of the accessories that I use all the time and that I think are essential for any shoot. First up is tools. I know that this is not strictly a lighting accessory, but it's definitely something worth mentioning. These are the tools that I take on every shoot, like my Leatherman Wave. I've had this tool for the last nine years and it is my most favorite tool. I use it all the time for cutting tape, boxes, and zip strips, a file for filing my nails if they get chewed up on something, wire strippers and cutters for repairing broken power cables, screwdrivers and pliers for tightening down floppy barn doors or tightening up a light stand compression lock, tiny scissors for trimming up your nose hairs, and much, much more. I have fixed countless lights, stands, tripods, cables, and accessories with this tool, and it has never let me down. These have a 25-year warranty, and I have had this replaced with no questions asked. Some of the other multi-tools feel like the business end of a metal file when you put the squeeze down on them, but the Wave doesn't. It has a nice rounded edge and feels very comfortable. The Wave is not the cheapest multi-tool, but for me, it's worth it. I also have these tools along with a special bag of things in my camera bag as well. I have a set of metric and standard hex wrenches, an adjustable wrench, and a 7 16 and 3 8 inch wrench for quarter inch bolts and nuts. In my special bag of things, I have a bunch more special hex wrenches, fuses, as well as a bag full of extra bolts, screws, nuts, and washers for both lighting gear and camera gear. I like to have extra quick release plate screws for my camera, an extra quick release plate, and enough hardware to get my MacGyver on anything that might break. I have saved the day more than once with a bolt from this bag. Clamps are another must for any kit. Little clamps, big clamps, you almost can't have enough. Typical uses for clamps are holding a gel filter to a light, although if you are using a hot light, don't use a plastic clamp because it'll melt. Holding cables to stands or tripods, clamping a power strip to a light stand, holding fabric to a support, clipping notes to a stand, and much more. I usually bring a sack of clamps to every shoot. Gloves are another essential, and not just for using hot lights. I use gloves to load gear in and out. It protects my hands from cuts and scrapes, but it also helps me keep a grip on things. I like to wear gloves for setting up lights that are a bit dirty. I'm super weird about keeping all of my gear clean, and I do not like to have dirty hands when I am running a one-man band. Getting your hands all dirty and then touching cameras and lens glass is a big no-no in my book. Tape. Lighting and gaff tape go together like mac and cheese or peanut butter and jelly, taping down cables, temporary fixes, temporary attachment, and labeling stuff are all common uses of gaff tape. Standard gaff tape has been used for years, but there's another tape product that I wanted to show you, and that's industry tape. Industry tape is a new adhesive, and unlike conventional adhesives, it leaves no residue. It's designed for easy tearing and reuse, all while maintaining its strength and durability. Residue left over from tape is nasty, and it'll ruin cables, stands, and everything that it gets on. It's something that drives me nuts. I once used a 150-foot, 24-channel audio snake that had been duct taped down to a carpet. When they pulled it up, the tape got all mangled and left goop all over the snake. When I used it, it got residue all over me and the gear, and it got super grimy. Have you ever had to gaff tape anything to a painted wall? Chances are that it probably left a mark or a bit of goop on the wall. Industry tape is super clean and won't do that. 
It's also writable and rewritable if you erase with an alcohol swab. The adhesion also remains after removal for multiple uses, and that is super handy. This is IT10, which is shiny. This is IT9, which is green, and this is MIT10 for matte finish. IT30 is super grip. This stuff may leave residue because it has two times the adhesive strength of regular gaffer's tape. This is for holding something super secure or for something that regular gaffer's tape wouldn't hold. DS169 is double sided. One side has stronger adhesion strength for a more permanent hold, while the other side has lower adhesion strength for a temporary hold. This is great for taping gels to large gel frames because they can be removed and replaced with another gel without needing to retape the frame. Lastly, let's talk about power and cables. Do not skimp on extension cord cables, sometimes called stingers, especially if you are using larger incandescent lights. A lot of power strips are rated for 15 amps, so you might as well use a cable rated for 15 amps as well. This means that you need at least a 14 gauge wire for a 50 foot cable. If you can't find reasonable pricing of cables in your area, check out monoprice.com. They have some excellent deals on extension cables as well as every other kind of cable. When you are dealing with a bunch of cables, you have to have something to keep them organized. I like these Velcro cable ties. They are cheap and effective. All of my cables are secured this way and it makes things very easy when you are pulling out cables from a big box. I promise you, if you have ever had a container full of cables that were not individually tied, you will have yourself a cable knot from hell and spend the next 20 minutes undoing a big giant mess. Another nice thing about these Velcro straps is that you can use them to secure to a light stand or a yoke. I almost always have the strap connected on the female end of the power cables. This way, if I have to plug in an IEC cable to one of my fluorescent lights, I can strap the cable to the light yoke, making a strain relief. This way, if the cable gets pulled, it won't jack things up. And over time, the weight of the cable will slowly cause problems for the electrical connection. So for me, it's just about preventing future problems.